get ready for 10 all new, quick and easy rustic winter DIY. They're perfect for that wintry, cozy feeling that you've been looking for in your home. And for only a few dollars, anyone can afford them. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Anika and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Now, I don't know about you guys, but after the hustle and bustle of the holidays, which is funny this year, you know, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not doing any big gatherings or anything, but somehow we're still busy, but in a good way, <laughs> in a fun way. But I am so ready to just settle down, snuggle up with my sweatshirts and my fuzzy socks and my warm comfy blankets and just like sip hot cocoa by the fire and just enjoy the rest of winter. So that really inspired me to do some rustic wintry DIYs and I really hope you enjoy them. You can use these ideas to do more of a rustic glam or a rustic farmhouse. You can really make it your own. But the thing I like most about them is that they are super quick, super easy. Anyone can do them, but they are like gorgeous for your home. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Everyone hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out. And when it's over, head down to the comments and let me know which one is your favorite. Also, you can find me on all my social media platforms so you can show me what you've been working on, what you've been up to, or just tell me how your holidays are going. Or if you're watching this after Christmas and Hanukkah and all of that, tell me how your holidays went. <laughs> okay, guys, it's time to craft. So for our first quick and easy rustic winter DIY, you'll need a mason jar. And this is just one I had lying around my house. So it says ball on the side, but you can get some at Dollar Tree that don't have any pattern on the side. Or I've seen some really cute ones at Dollar General that have some snowflakes on them. Those would be really perfect for this wintry luminary that we're going to be making. I'm also going to grab some lace. You could also use some burlap ribbon if you want even more of a rustic feel. So we're just going to measure off the lace, make sure it fits around that lip of the mason jar. And then I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue. And this is really just to hold it in place while I tie some twine around the top of my lace. Now, I only went around one time with the twine, which I know if you've been watching my channel, you're probably shocked because I'm kind of obsessed with twine but I thought that going around one time added a nice little delicate touch and then I tied a sweet little bow in front. Next, I just wanted to add a little more of that rustic touch to my luminary. So I'm going to use two of these mini pine cones. I got these in a bag at Dollar General and I absolutely love them. They're so adorable for decorating and they add that little bit of rustic touch to any project that you're doing. And I also just cut a few pieces off of a Christmas pick that I have been using all season just to cut little pieces off and use them in projects. I used a little bit of hot glue to attach those and then I was ready to decorate the top of my jar with a little snowy touch to give it even more of that rustic feel. So to do that I'm going to use some Epsom salt. Now I got this from Walmart and I got this giant bag. It was about five dollars so I'll be doing a lot of winter crafting with it. I put some into a bowl deep enough for me to dip the top of my luminary into and then I just used Mod Podge, covered the entire area that I wanted the Epsom salt to stick to and then I dipped that right into the bowl. Now if you have any parts that aren't getting covered just add a little more Mod Podge and you should be able to cover it very nicely and I just love that kind of snowy feel that this gives to the jar. And as someone who grew up in Florida, I can appreciate adding that wintry rustic feeling of snow into my DIYs in case you don't have it right outside your front door. And that's it. I'm adding a faux candle to mine and my rustic winter luminary is complete. I love how it turned out. Now my next quick and easy rustic wintry DIY 
is one that I wanted to do because I had this Epsom salt that I needed to use up. So I added some glitter and this is just some white, very fine glitter. Now you could totally do this with just the Epsom salt, but this is just going to add that extra little touch of sparkle. So I'm going to combine it all together and then I'm going to take some spray adhesive and just some sticks that I have found in my backyard. So that makes this DIY so affordable. And I'm just going to spray them with the spray adhesive. And then I'm just going to gently shake the combination of the glitter and Epsom salt all over the branches. Now this is gonna give it that snowy feeling and it's just gonna make a very beautiful piece of decor for my home this winter. And with three little ones who love to just run around and go find sticks and pine cones in the yard, this is a DIY that also kept my kids busy. So this is a bonus DIY for me. Cheap, easy, and gave me a little bit of quiet time when keeping the kids busy outside. Now once I'm done with the glitter, I'm just going to shake it back into a container. And then once I've done all the branches I want to, I'm going to grab a tall container. This is just one that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to add all of that Epsom salt and glitter combination into the bottom of my vase. Then I'm just going to place all my glittery snowy branches into the vase. And that is it. This is a beautiful piece of rustic wintry decor that takes no time at all and very little money to put together. And I just think it's beautiful. DIY number three is going to use up all of those extra twigs that we didn't use in the previous DIY. Now I took this sign. This is just one that I got from Dollar Tree and I see this a lot around Valentine's Day, but honestly, my Dollar Tree has this sign all year round for some reason. I'm not sure why, but if you can't find this one, they have many similar. I'm just going to remove the twine that is there for you to hang it, and I'm just going to paint the back with white chalk paint. Now, you can do whatever color fits the decor in your home. It took me two coats to cover this completely and I let it dry completely and then I was ready to add my twig. Now before I added the twigs, I wanted to make this look a little bit like some aged wood. So I just used the dry brushing technique to kind of add those lines back into where the indentations were on the side of my sign so that it looked like a sign made out of wood planks. All dry brushing means is I dipped my paintbrush a very little bit of paint. I wiped most of it off onto a napkin until it was almost completely dry. And then I lightly brushed that on the areas where I wanted it to go. Also highlighting some of the corners to make it look a little bit worn, weathered, and a little bit more like wood. Now I wanted this to look like a snowflake and I'm not all that creative when it comes to making patterns. So I just printed off a picture of a snowflake from the internet. I just Googled snowflake and found one that seemed easy enough to make. And then I just kind of followed that pattern, but I did it with twigs. Using hot glue, I just glued it on until I had the shape of my snowflake. I think this is a fun project to do to use up some of those sticks that might be hanging around your yard. And I actually think I might be doing this one with my kids later. It turned out so cute and I just love it. For the next rustic winter DIY, I'll be using this box that I got from Dollar Tree. Now this box has an outer box that's slightly larger and an inner box. Because it came from Dollar Tree, sometimes there are a few little imperfections in them. So if you can check beforehand, go ahead and do that. But I think it'll still look great even with this little broken piece in the corner. Next, I went ahead and used some stain on my box because I wanted it to have a really rich and warm brown color. And I laid it on pretty thick because I wanted it to look nice and saturated. Now you can use any color of stain you want. This one is American Walnut, which I really love to use because it matches a lot of the decor and cabinetry in my home. I went ahead and gave it a nice coat and then I let it dry. I just happened to let it dry overnight, but honestly, I think it would have been ready to craft on after about 30 minutes. 
Next, I grab my little snowflake patterns again, and I'm just going to go ahead and use a pencil and draw it right onto the side of my box. Now, you can use this with the open side up and make it into a planter, or you can do what I did, which was using the open side down, because I thought maybe I would put some candles on this, or even just use them as objects to stack on one another um, in my decor. Either way would work, which makes this Dollar Tree DIY really versatile. I just went ahead and used white paint and painted it onto the side. Now, I am no artist, but I kind of love the imperfections that came from me painting this. Now, I do have a Cricut, so I could have put a vinyl snowflake on there, and you can totally do that if that's more what you enjoy doing. But I liked that little hand-painted touch that these had, so I just decided to go ahead and paint mine on. And that's it quick and easy and it only cost me a dollar. Since I had my stain out, I decided to do another Dollar Tree hack that I like to do for almost every season. I got these little crates that they have at Dollar Tree and I went ahead and glued two of them together. Now they do have taller ones that I've used in some previous DIYs. I'll be sure to link those down in the description box if you wanna see some other variations on how to make this type of a DIY. I also love that you can make this as long as you want to. Now I just did two boxes together, but if you want to do a centerpiece for your entire dining room table or a kitchen island or something like that, you can just go ahead and continue gluing these together until you have your desired length. Next, I used that same American Walnut stain and I went ahead and stained the entire box. Once that was dry, I was able to put some candles inside and I also just used some greenery, some pine cones, and I just tried to keep this very sparse and just a very pretty look of a wintry type of centerpiece. Next up, I'm going to make a swag out of more treasures that my kids found in the yard. Now I'm going to use these pine cones that they gathered and I'm going to use this burlap ribbon that I had. Of course, you can use any type of ribbon or rope that you like to use in your DIYs. Now I'm just going to kind of eyeball how long I want kind of the mid level to be. So however long you cut your ribbon, you're gonna probably want some a little longer and some a little shorter, just so that your pine cones will hang in a staggered way and you'll be able to see all of them. Once I have my pine cones laid out and I kind of have an idea of how I want them to hang once everything is together, I'm going to go ahead and just glue them onto the ribbon. Now, I found that it looked a little nicer and neater when I made a little triangle out of the bottom of my ribbon by using two little dabs of hot glue and then gluing that triangle right on top of my pine cone. And about halfway through my DIY, I had one of my little helpers demand her pine cones back. Thankfully, she shared them back with me so I could finish my swag. Now to add a little pretty touch to this rustic winter DIY, I just tied off some ribbon that I had. Now I was thinking about using twine for this, but then I decided that I wanted this to have a little more of a farmhousey or glam feel. So I used some pretty ribbon with some gold polka dots on it. And instead of tying a bow, I just tied off a little knot and glued those right on top of my pine cones. Once that was done, I was ready to lay them out one last time, make sure everything was hanging the way I wanted it to hang, and then I used that same polka dot ribbon to tie off the top of my swag. Once it was tied, I just cut the tops off at an angle, and that was it. I was ready to hang it. I love how this looks. It's rustic, but it still has kind of a farmhousey feel to it. It looks 
kind of thrown together with things that I have in my yard, but also you can tell that it was made with intention. And I just like the wintry feel that I get from this swag. I had a few pine cones left over, so this Dollar Tree DIY is going to be perfect to use them up. I used another vase that I got from Dollar Tree, and then I used these pixie lights. Now they do have pixie lights at Dollar Tree, but I got this package on Amazon. There was six in there, and I just kind of like the way they look. I'll be sure to link them down in the description box if you'd like to check them out. I started by just putting some pixie lights down in the bottom and then little by little I layered in some pine cones to go along with the lights. Now my hands not small enough to fit into the vase so I just used a little plastic knife to push it down and then I put the pine cones in one at a time making sure to get a nice little swirl of lights in between each pine cone. And that was it. You can make six of these with this pack of six pixie lights and some pine cones that are free in your yard. And then the vases only cost a dollar. I think they make beautiful centerpieces, but also pretty little touches to have around your home this winter. Now for this DIY, I'm going to start with this wood sign that I got from Target Dollar Spot. This is $5.00 which is a little more than what you would pay at Dollar Tree, but honestly, the weight of it and how nice the frame is makes it totally worth it. Now this one is reversible and I really liked one side, but I wanted to make sure that I had a side that I could use all the way through winter. So I covered up the other side of it, which I realize in hindsight has a very slick texture to it and is probably a dry erase. So if you do this DIY, don't um, get this particular sign because it did make it hard for the paint to stick. And I don't know why I wasn't thinking ahead of time that a dry erase would actually be pretty cool. But they have lots of other signs there, some of which I did not care for the graphics on and that would be the perfect frame to get for this DIY. Now I went ahead and I covered up the graphic that was on the side that I was not going to use anymore. And then once that was dried, I removed the painter's tape, which I put there to protect the frame. And I'm going to go ahead and put some wording onto my frame. Now I'm going to use my Cricut because I want this sign to say silver white winters that melt into spring. I think it's the perfect sentiment for this time of year. And I just find it a little quicker and easier to use my Cricut. However, I have tutorials on how you can get the same look without a vinyl cutter. I'll be sure to link those down in the description box so you can see all the things that you can do using a different method to transfer lettering onto your projects if you do not have a vinyl cutter. After putting the words on, that was it. I love how cute this frame is. I can dress it up, I can dress it down, I can put it anywhere in my home, and I love that the sign is still reversible. I can use one side for Christmas and the other will take me all the way through winter. And for our ninth rustic wintry DIY, I'm going to use these little pieces of wood that I got from Dollar Tree. Now, I want to make sure that most of them are about the same height. Some of them in the bag might be a little higher, a little shorter. Just make sure that you line them up as best you can to make them flat on top. Once I have them all about the same height, I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue gun to glue all the little pieces around one central piece. Once that's done, I'm going to grab some twine and tie it around the entire thing. And then I'm going to add some pine cones and some greenery just for a little decoration on the front. And just like that, I have a little riser for candles. And I think this is the perfect wintry looking rustic craft to have around your home. You can make these in different heights. You can stack more on top of each other. And they just bring that feeling of the outside wintry forest into your home.
Now I love all of those DIYs. Some of them I love because they are so easy but so beautiful and really give a big bang for your buck as far as being free, a lot of them, you know, just going out and grabbing things from your yard. But they're really simple ways to make your house beautiful. I think my favorite are those little mason jar lumieries. I can imagine making a whole bunch of those and just lining them up across my mantle. In fact, I think I might do that. I just love how those came out. But make sure you head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. So in keeping with the wintry quick and easy theme, I decided for craft number 10 to make some edible snowballs. Now these are super customizable. You can make them whatever flavor you want. They're so yummy and I really think you're gonna love them. So it's time to eat. To make these delicious little snowballs, we're going to start with some cream cheese and we're going to mix in our flavor that we're going to use. Now I'm using almond extract or you could use vanilla extract if you want it to kind of be like a sweet cheesecakey flavor. You could add mint extract if you want to do more of a Christmassy minty theme or these would even taste really good in the summer with a little bit of a lemony flavor. When you mix it together, you want to use the lowest setting on your hand mixer and mix it until it's just combined. Next, we're going to add two cups of powdered sugar and some milk. Once again, you want to combine this with your hand mixer. Make sure it's on low and mix it until just combined. Otherwise, you will overmix it. Now, I've never actually overmixed this, so I'm not sure what happens <laughs> if you overmix it. If you do know, please let me know down in the comments. Every time I make this, it's delicious no matter how much I mix it. So don't be too intimidated by that little note in the recipe. Next, we're going to add another cup of powdered sugar. And this is where you would add your sprinkles. Now, because I'm making mine into snowballs, I'm just using some white sprinkles just for a little extra crystally looking icy feel but this is where it would look really cute if you're doing these for christmas you could use red and green sprinkles inside even for halloween you could use black and purple then when you bite into your little mint or whatever flavor you made it you'll see the little sprinkles inside once again we want to combine this until it's just combined now for our last cup of powdered sugar, we're gonna go ahead and use our hands to combine everything. This way we will be able to feel when it is done. So it's going to be very sticky when you first start combining it, but as you incorporate the powdered sugar, it should get nice and smooth and you won't have that stickiness anymore. If you do, then you need to go ahead and add just a little bit more powdered sugar until it's a texture where you'll be able to roll it into a ball without it sticking all over your hands. Next, we're going to take some granulated sugar or you could use powdered sugar for this. And I'm also just going to add in some of my white sprinkles. Here is another opportunity for you to use colors if you're doing this at another time of year. I thought for my little snowballs, I would do white sprinkles, white granulated sugar, and then a little bit of gold sprinkles just to add a little bit of glam into my snowballs. Now all we need to do is take our dough and roll it into little balls. Now you're going to want to make these about half an inch, three quarters of an inch at most. They are very rich and if you make them too big, they'll be too much for you and your guests. Once they're rolled into balls, I'm gonna take it and roll it into my sugar mixture. And then I'm just going to set it onto a cookie sheet or as you see here, I just have a cutting board with some parchment paper on it. Once I have everything rolled out, I'm gonna take these little guys and put them in the refrigerator. Now you can leave them in balls like this, or if you're feeling really adventurous, go ahead and melt some chocolate and dip them in. They are so delicious. It tastes like cheesecake in a ball form. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs I had for you today. If you enjoyed them, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below which DIY was your favorite and of course, share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.